morning, Bixweir, RoadToRuta.com. With your morning horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. As you can tell, this mug is from Boonville, where that language was invented. I'm also wearing the Anderson Valley Brewery shirt. <laughs> That's where I was this weekend for Father's Day. <clears throat> but today I want to start off the morning news with a weather update. Dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> weather update. Look at these temperatures in where I was in Boonville this weekend. This is what's going on all weekend. It was even worse yesterday. Mornings are in the low 60s. And in the afternoon, it gets well over 100. Insane jump. Craziness. Absolute craziness. I got to sleep last night, finally. And it was, I mean, literally, even at night. Now, I know I'm complaining. and I know it's a lot hotter in different places. Uh, but I'm not used to it at all. And I'm crying about the weather is way too hot. And then last night, after clear skies all day, I get to sleep finally, and then all of a sudden lightning. I'm like, what? What, is, what in the world is that? I wake up, it's pouring outside. I guess it's a, you know, you, in the hot weather areas, you get that all the time. You know, the, the heat lightning and all that with the rain. I'm not used to that. We, we don't have that kind of weather in California. <laughs> At least in Northern California, where it's always normal, normal weather. But uh, yeah, that's your weather report. I would say this is a web bot hit too. If you read Cliff's reports from a few months back when he was doing the Alta reports, he said there's going to be an extremely long winter, which there was here in Northern California, definitely. I think all across the United States, it was really odd weather. Um, and he said cold and rainy and long winter. And then he said it's going to be a really intense, hot, short summer. So we're definitely at the intense hot part, at least for where I am. Uh, well, you know, we broke all kinds of records yesterday. There's supposed to be records broken every day this week uh, in Northern California. And I'm sure it's all on the, the Pacific Coast. But the key here is Cliff said it's going to be a very short summer also. So don't expect, you know, things to be nice and wonderful all throughout the uh, September, October, November. He said winter's going to hit early. I believe that's... I'll have to go back and read the reports. But it, to me, it feels like a web bot hit. We went from cold and rainy, which I showed you guys in the videos, to blistering hot and miserable. And I don't have air conditioning. We don't need air conditioning in in uh, in Oakland. But I might go get a fan today. <laughs> if there's any left, I hear there's a run on fans. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for complaining, but to me, that's a big deal. I'm not used to being, uh, you know, not feeling very, uh, what do you call it? I like perfect weather. I live in Oakland. We have a microclimate. San Francisco gets too cold. Uh, anything over the tunnel into the Walnut Creek area gets too hot. But Oakland is always perfect weather. That's why I live here. <laughs> not today, not this week. Anyway, but there is some news on the weather front while we're there. It uh, looks like the first big storm of the season is starting to gain some strength in uh, the Gulf, and uh, we will see where that goes. Um, let me see if it says anything important. Two separate tropical storms are likely to form in the Gulf of Mexico and in the Atlantic over the next couple of days, the National Hurricane Center said. A tropical system that is drenching Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula is being watched for development and has an 80% chance of becoming a tropical storm or depression in the Gulf within the next few days. I think I think last two years it's been pretty quiet as far as hurricanes in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. I think uh, this year is going to be a doozy. That's just my prediction. Just because I'm sitting here in the, the stifling heat in Oakland, <laughs> it's hotter there probably. Anyway, that's that's my Big Squares Webbot prediction. Although I didn't use Webbots. Uh, oh, really interesting stuff going on, and this is really important. Because Venezuela is kind of where the United States is heading with money printing and all that. Um, and it's a lesson that still needs to be learned by the uh, United States citizen, which we will learn. You can't print money for free forever, even when you rig all the markets and pretend the world is fine and everything's wonderful. So Venezuela has been destroyed. Uh, if they're worried about the boulevard, uh, don't worry. 
it's being rigged by the U.S. government, as usual. So, yes, the U.S. government is the ones who are destroying the lives and livelihoods of Venezuela because Chavez went against the wishes of the powers that be in the Obama administration. And uh, Trump, or who was it before him? Bush. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I expect a lot more uh, currency problems. But what you got to do is just step back and say, okay, Venezuela is just experiencing this stuff a little earlier than the rest of the world. So let's take a look at what Venezuela, the Venezuelan people can do now. Now remember, if, if there was no Bitcoin, no cryptocurrencies available, they would be screwed. Absolutely screwed and they would have to trust their government. But as their currency is crashing, Bitcoin trading in Venezuela intensifies. Boulevards sit down and devalued. A Bloomberg article pointed out on June 15th that Bitcoin trading volume had jumped to 1.3 million this past week in Venezuela. There seems to be ever-increasing excitement about cryptocurrency in the country. Yes, yes, of course there is. What, what else are they going to use? In many places, people are hesitant and skeptical about digital currencies because of possible violent market fluctuations, questionable legality, or concerns about utility. In Venezuela, however, no one can afford the luxury of being concerned. The price fluctuation is negligible compared to the de devalued boulevard. This is apparent in the recent months. Bitcoin trading has skyrocketed, with last week reaching all-time highs according to coin.dance charts. Check that out. See, people, those of you who are saying that Bitcoin is not a currency you need to wake up and smell the coffee. The instant people don't trust the unbacked fiat money in their country, they're going to turn to Bitcoin because it is a currency. It's, it's sitting there waiting for us to be used as a currency. And this will happen in every, every country around the world as the unbacked fiat system dies. And this is just a clear sign that it is, it is, it will be used as a currency that's why I was so against the Segwit stuff. It would have taken it, the, the currency aspects away. It would have taken, it, it still would have cost too much, and we needed to fix the big problem. And the big problem was get it into the hands of the people, cheap transactions, and fast. Uh, I, I hear the Segwit slash Bitcoin Unlimited problem is being resolved in the background. Let's hope so. Uh, the interesting thing is a lot of people kind of gave up on Bitcoin because of that and started getting into the other cryptos like Ethereum and, and the 50 million other ones. Um, if Bitcoin does solve it, everybody will rush right back to Bitcoin. Uh, <clears throat> it has the fir first mover uh, advantage, and I'm not saying the other ones won't go up. I think all of them will go up. I think we having a lot of alternatives to a, a dying system is a good thing, and the, the, you know, the stronger ones will rise to the top, and Bitcoin is obviously... A little strong, but, you know, <laughs> will it be available to the people in time? Uh, I think so. I think uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, not the BIP 148, but something happening right before that. <laughs> we'll see. I, you know, I, I've gotten out of that battle for a while. And because, you know, just look at the other cryptos. What happens in a free market? It runs away from the weak one and runs into all the ones that potentially could be more useful in a uh, situation that Venezuela is going through right now, a crashing of the currency. Bitcoin would have been great. It still has the chance to be great if it's fast and cheap. And uh, so we're seeing it in Venezuela. Here's a quote. There have been many reports of people residing in Venezuela turning to Bitcoin to hedge against the country's economic failures. Venezuelans have been using Bitcoin because their national currency, the Bolivar, has been significantly de devalued and citizens using the tender are suffering from over 1,800% inflation. Parsh that's partially due to the government printing money, but the majority of uh, a currency's value is determined in the derivative market that are controlled by the U.S. and the, the powers that be that control all markets. The U.S. could solve this problem with a click of a mouse today and save the Venezuelan people, but it would make their government stronger, and they don't want to do that. So, yes... The, the question of whether or not Bitcoin is a currency, 
that came up, I think this week there was an interview, uh, one of the, the prognosticators, other than saying Bitcoin is dead, said Bitcoin is not a currency. Of course it's a currency. It's a currency when the, your system breaks down and it will be sitting there waiting for you. If not Bitcoin, then another one of the cryptos. So hopefully Bitcoin can get shit together before the United States falls into the Venezuela world. And uh, But that was always the plan for the, the uh, United States was to adopt Bitcoin as a transition currency. And if it works great, if it doesn't, it will transition into gold. Um, I think it'll work great. We'll find out though. My bets have been placed and are made already. Where are your bets? <laughs> All right, let's move on. Speaking of the cryptocurrencies, uh, currently, and this is just one site. This is CoinMarketCap.com. It lists currently right up here on the top left 757 currencies, cryptocurrencies. Probably 740 of them <laughs> won't survive. So make sure you're smart and, and pick the right ones uh, that you want to get involved in. What is the use case? And what's the competition? Now, a lot of these coins are the use case is as a use as a means of exchange and as a currency that's the idea is to compete against bitcoin uh good luck with that this you know <laughs> bitcoin's gonna win in the end i believe and uh it yeah you know, it might take a while due to the you know slowdown potential but there's also ethereum ethereum will win because it's an amazing uh use case for ethereum and people are using it right now i went through 500 different companies that were using it the other day when I rapid fire reading off these companies. Uh, let's see here. Bitcoin's at 2584. Um, seven days down 7%. Oh no. Oh my God. Don't forget. Just a little over a year ago, it was under $400. So yeah, Bitcoin is still rocking. Ethereum, that's just crazy. It was under, under 10 bucks. What was that? Six months ago? Seven months ago? Crazy. Crazy, but that that's a use case situation, um, and Bit and Ethereum will continue to go up. Like I said in a few of my videos in the past, as new uh, businesses be begin to adopt the Ethereum avenue to get to the blockchain technology, you're going to hear good news about Ethereum every single day. Hey, a new company, GE's decided to use the Ethereum blockchain. Toyota is using the Ethereum blockchain. Apple computer is using the Ethereum blockchain. Everybody's going to use the Ethereum blockchain. It's a great idea. And bravo to Ethereum. Bravo. Uh, Ripple, the Bankster coin, is at 28, 28 cents. I don't deal on that one much at all. I did. I made some money quick, and I got out because I don't trust banks. <laughs> I think Litecoin has done extremely well lately. Uh, might be because of the Bitcoin issues. Um... But and it might also be that they uh, they list that you can buy it on Coinbase now, which is a big deal because Coinbase is one of the biggest exchanges out there, and it has an online wallet as well. So a lot of people just throw their you know money into Coinbase and just leave it there. Don't leave it there. Pull it out. Coinbase won't be around after the crash, possibly. Depends how smooth the crash goes. Um, but all these all these companies. That uh, that deal in the cryptos, like Coinbase and Kraken and all these companies, they have employees. They have to pay in the U.S. dollar and the and and the fiat currency of their country that they reside. They have taxes that they got to pay in U.S. dollar. And if those things are crashing down, if their bank accounts go bust, you're going to see a whole lot of uh, Mount Goxes happen, where coins surprisingly just disappear. You know, when they're fleeing for their lives because the banks have crashed, of course, you know they're not get, the company's not going to be around saving your money for you. They're going to run with it, and then you're in the middle of bankruptcy if the courts are even working. Then so, <laughs> do as you must. But uh, I wouldn't keep any cryptos out of your own possession, just like silver. Keep it in your own possession, my friends. Uh, the other ones, Ethereum Classic, I, it's okay. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I don't think we need it. I think you got the theorems just fine. And, you know, that's the result of this, the fork in the road way back when. And a lot of the loyalists stayed with the Ethereum Classic. And it's got a use case. Um, but I think in the end, Ethereum will. It, and Ethereum's ETH. Ethereum Classic is ETC. And then there's a whole bunch of hundred other ones. 
yes, spend the time to get to know each one. You can go on YouTube and just ask your question. Which cryptocurrency are you interested in? What makes sense? Uh, what are the new ones coming out? The new ICOs. Most of the new ICOs are, are people just wasting their money on. If you don't understand the coin, it, you're going to lose your money. You're going to lose your money. Everybody's has an ICO, an initial coin offering now, because it's easy money to raise. And most of these companies, they have nothing behind them. They'll, you know, it's like the dot-com days. They'll go poof in a cloud of dust and disappear. Um, but then you have your gems. I think Veritasium is going to be a gem. And that gem is going to, you know, right now, let's see what it's trading at right now. And it's not, it's not trading on a big, big exchange yet, which is interesting. Um, so, but it's trading in uh, this dark market exchange, but volumes are almost nothing. But let's see, right here, $139 per coin. And those who got into it in the ICO were paying, you know, anywhere two to, to ten bucks. So if you got into that, bravo to you. Um, and, re and the funny thing is I get emails all the time saying, oh, I could have invested in that. I'd be a millionaire by now. Have I only invested? And then the people who did invest it say, I wish I invested more in that. Well, yeah, the the home runs, you're always going to wish you're going to bet on a home run, but you don't know that they're going to be home runs until, you know, the the uh, shakeout happens when they get put on an exchange. The interesting thing here is, Tazium, this is built on the Ethereum blockchain, and at some point, the market cap and the price of Veritasium will probably go past the price of Ethereum. So businesses built on the Ethereum blockchain might even be worth a whole lot more than Ethereum and most likely will if they're a good business. So really exciting stuff there for Reggie and Reggie's a good guy and works hard and uh, and he got it early on and he's bringing his uh, version of a, a cryptocurrency and a crypto, crypto trading platform I think is going to be the best use for that, you know, if the comics or the... LBMA go down, you got uh, Veritasium to, to start up new markets. And I think that's what will happen. Um, and I do see all the exchanges going down. So, yeah, this could be the monster. We'll see what happens when it starts trading in a big exchange. Um, but I, I, most likely, I would say it eclipsed the price of Ethereum, which is like, you know, one of the, the children of Ethereum are, are you know, going to be bigger than the parent. Um, but... It just shows you that Ethereum is a tool that people can build businesses on, and this is a, a great idea. And uh, it's kind of the first of its kind, something that's available to take the place, replace capital markets, and that's three hundred trillion dollar business. So <laughs> even if uh, Veritasium gets a little bit of that business, it'll be unbelievable. And speaking of unbelievable, people who still listen to the Fed, which is, there are some of you, you know, most of you who listen to the Fed aren't really into the cryptos yet because the cryptos are taking over the world and it's it's the wave of the future um, and the, the cryptos don't need the Fed. So, but those of you who do need the Fed, you're getting, you're hearing different signs and different uh, prognostications from the Fed all the time and the... The mainstream media loves to jump up and down and say, oh my God, the Fed did this, the Fed did that, the Fed did this, and move the markets. Well, in reality, the behind the scenes, how about that computer in the basement of the U.S. Treasury that Steve Mnuchin clicks on? He was the head of IT at Goldman Sachs. That's why he is where he is, to rig the markets with computers. So it doesn't really matter what they say. They're going to time their comments when they want to drive something up, down, or sideways. So... What the Fed says doesn't matter. What the uh, what Steve Mnuchin clicks in the basement of the Treasury does matter. <laughs> At least as far as the rigged markets are going. And all those are going away and will be replaced by things probably built on the Ethereum blockchain. And by Bitcoin when they get their shit together. Which I think is, is within a month and a half. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say right now within a month and a half. Uh, Bitcoin will kind of figure out what's going on with the, uh, the SegWit stuff and the Bitcoin Unlimited stuff, and but it will be volatile. So it could be a huge spike up if it's a great solution or a huge spike down if it's not a great solution. Um, it's just craziness. Just, 
but but the the volatility is kind of shaken out with Bitcoin if you look at it because it's got such a big market cap and because so many people are betting on it and and it's proving to be a, a long term hold, which is great. So yeah, you all everybody should have Bitcoin in their crypto portfolio and in their in their life portfolio. But keep it offline. Keep it in your own hands. <clears throat> all right, and finally. Here we have silver. Remember last week, everybody's all excited because you know there's all these revelations of uh, who was rigging the silver market and people getting busted over the last couple weekends. And the guy who needs to get busted the most is in the basement of the U.S. Treasury, Steve Mnuchin right now, who's in charge of the silver price. And if you look at the long-term charts of silver, you got uh, you know, 30 days silver all Anything under 17 bucks is insane, and here's why. Look at the like the six month chart. Everything's hovering around this. If it gets too low, it spikes. These are all computer driven crashes, and that's Steve Mnuchin's deal right now, bastard. Uh, but look at the 10 year silver chart. You you wouldn't think that they created trillions of dollars when silver went from fifty dollars down to back to you know where it was has been trading. Uh, in the controlled realm between, you know, 15 and $20. Think of all the money and QE that's been going on since June of 2011, and it's kind of laughable to see, to intellectually think, hey, they're, they're printing so much money. How is it that the price of silver... Since this time, they're printing money like it's going out of style. How is it that the price of silver has gone down so much? <laughs> it's very simple. All silver prices are controlled with a computer program with computers and derivatives. Computers and derivatives. The computers were invented by, uh, computer programs were invented by Alan Greenspan, the inventor of unbacked fiat money. Uh, in the 1960s and 70s, he blamed himself for the Y2K problem because he, he coded it in two digits instead of four. That's why Alan Greenspan became so famous and headed the Fed. When Alan Greenspan took the helm of the Fed, it shocked the world. Alan Greenspan was known as a gold bug. And you put a gold bug in charge of the Fed, what's going on? And then he used his computer programs to rig the markets for, uh, you know, what was it? He was in there since 87 to around 2007. So almost 20 years. Crazy. Crazy stuff. And then he left and he wrote the Satoshi White Paper, <laughs> according to Big Swear. I think he did. He was a computer expert. He was knee deep in monetary policy, monetary issues, um, and I think he did. I think he is Satoshi, or at least part of the group that invented it, and a big proponent of it. He won't say it in an interview now because Satoshi doesn't want to come out of hiding. But if you think about it, if if Greenspan was Satoshi, those million Bitcoin that are sitting in Satoshi's account are the property of the United States of America, most likely right now. Um, because I think he that's his parting gift to the world is is in, and to the United States is a large chunk of uh, unbacked, unregulated uh, cryptocurrency that we can use as money going forward. So uh, yeah, that's exciting stuff. Anyway, this is Big Square Road to Ruta .com. Don't forget to subscribe to the morning Horn of Z's Horn of Z's your sip of coffee and like this video. Do a thumbs up thing. And don't forget to subscribe and go to the website. You go to the website, you put your email in, you get a free book. Can't beat that. That's a good price for a book, free book. <laughs> we'll talk to you later.